Hello people, in this video we want to look at metaplasia. So what exactly is metaplasia? That is what we have to look at. Now this comes under cellular adaptation guys. Look at the introduction here. It's a type of cellular adaptation. So whenever there is abnormal stimuli, external stimuli is abnormal, the cell tries to adapt, it tries to adjust to the external environment by undergoing metaplasia. In the sense, one uh, cell type will become another cell type. Like example, a squamous cell can become a columnar cell. So that is what is a metaplasia. This is reversible in early stage. In later stage, it can become carcinoma, whatever, irreversible and then carcinoma, etc. Okay. So basically, there are two types of uh, metaplasia, epithelial metaplasia and mesenchymal metaplasia. So before we go to this, let us look at our cellular um, uh, adaptation. We have already seen this in cellular adaptation. There are many types of cellular adaptation. You have atrophy, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia and dysplasia. Now basically atrophy is where it becomes small in size, hypertrophy where the cell becomes large in size, hyperplasia is where they, there are uh, increased number of cells, okay that is hyperplasia, increased number of cells is hyperplasia, hypertrophy guys is the increase in the size, that's why even the font size has been increased, hypertrophy is this one. Metaplasia is what we want to concentrate on in this video. Metaplasia is where the type of cell has changed, right? So a squamous will become columna, columna will become squamous. And dysplasia is completely destroyed, um, completely, uh, you know, you cannot even recognize the type of a uh, cell, that is dysplasia. Now, moving on. So basically in metaplasia, there are two types. You have epithelial metaplasia and mesenchymal metaplasia, guys. Under that, you have squamous metaplasia and columnar metaplasia. Please pay attention here. You have squamous metaplasia and columnar metaplasia. In columnar metaplasia, you, uh, you have already seen Barrett's esophagus. Do you remember Barrett's esophagus? So Barrett's esophagus is uh, where the squamous epithelium of the esophagus is converted into columnar epithelium. So that is why it's called as columnar uh, metaplasia. Okay, so let us look at um, first of all this Barrett's esophagus just to understand exactly the metaplasia means what. Okay, at this junction that is between the esophagus and the stomach, that place, what happens due to continuous gastroesophageal reflux disease, this squamous epithelium which is present at this place, it becomes columnar. Columnar in the sense uh, it will have goblet cells etc. So it has columnar uh, and goblet cells. So it is called as intestinal metaplasia. It is like intestinal cells that they become, not just columnar. They become like intestinal cells. Okay. So this is this is metaplasia. This is the basic thing you have to understand about metaplasia. Okay. So now going back to our metaplasia um, uh, classification, we have epithelial metaplasia and mesenchymal metaplasia. So in epithelial metaplasia, you have something that can become squamous becomes squamous, that is squamous metaplasia, becomes columnar, that becomes columnar metaplasia, that is example is Barrett's esophagus, okay. So basically here what happens, there is some mechanical or uh, chemical or an infection that happens because of which the epithelium that is there, it tries to become stronger by assuming a different form, but it will not be fully functional like the previous epithelium. The previous epithelium will be the best epithelium, but because of the abnormal stimuli it tries to become strong but it will not have the specialized functions of the original uh, epithelium so here you can uh, it can become squamous or it become columnar so what can become squamous that means something that was not squamous all this while right so this is a very common thing this becomes squamous is a very common thing so very common examples given here are the bronchus in bronchus okay which is normally lined by pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelium in chronic smokers, it becomes squamous. Guys, pay attention here. The bronchus, what happens? There is pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Okay, guys. And this becomes squamous in chronic smokers. So the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium in the bronchus will become Squamous in chronic smokers. Now coming to uterine endocervix. What is the normal epithelium here in uterine endocervix? 
cervix is lined by simple columnar epithelium guys look at all this wherever it is columnar it is becoming squamous so pay attention here in the bronchus pseudo stratified columnar is becoming squamous because in chronic smokers in cervix that is here <coughs> in cervix it's a simple columnar due to prolapse of uterus and old age it will become squamous then coming to gallbladder gallbladder has simple columnar in cholecystitis and cholelithiasis, that is gallbladder uh, stones and gall um, inflammation, chronic uh, cholecystitis, what will happen? It will become squamous. Then coming to prostate, guys. Prostate is also columnar. The ducts are lined by simple columnar epithelium. In chronic prostatitis and estrogen therapy, it will become squamous. If you give estrogen, then the prostate duct, which is columnar it will become squamous then here we are here gallbladder over prostate over now renal pelvis and renal uh, urinary bladder those are lined by what transitional epithelium so the, all that umbrella shaped cells and all will be there though transitional epithelium is going to uh, become squamous in chronic infection and kidney stones right in renal stones now in vitamin a deficiency what happens in vitamin a deficiency guys pay attention here we're looking at vitamin a deficiency uh, apart from xerophthalmia okay uh, squamous metapatia happens in vitamin a deficiency like the nose the bronchi the urinary tract the uh, salivary glands everything they become squamous okay so that is what you have to know Okay, so we are done with the squamous metaplasia. Okay, so now let us move on to columnar metaplasia. How does that sound for you now? If we move on to columnar metaplasia, okay for you? Ready? Shall we move on to columnar metaplasia? Okay, so we will move to columnar metaplasia. Example, best example for columnar metaplasia is what? Barrett's esophagus, right? So, columnar metaplasia, something that is squamous or something else can become columnar, correct? So, Barrett's esophagus, um, you will see that the squamous epithelium becomes like intestine, right? Columnar with goblet cells. So, that is columnar uh, metaplasia. It is called as uh, meta intestinal metaplasia because it will have goblet cells and all that, okay? So, in uh, cro healed chronic gastric ulcer, so gastric ulcer will become intestinal metaplasia. Healed chronic gastric ulcer. So, pay attention here. This is like Barrett's esophagus where something is becoming columnar. From something else, it is becoming columnar. So, we are looking at columnar metaplasia. So, intestinal metaplasia where the stomach uh, in, uh, epithelium, it's already columnar, but it is becoming like intestine. So, it is uh, called as intestinal metaplasia, healed chronic gastric ulcer. Barrett's esophagus, columnar metaplasia and Barrett's esophagus in which there is a change of normal squamous epithelium into columnar epithelium. So, here in the esophagus, right, due to GERD, right, so squamous will become columnar. This is due to GERD, that is chronic GERD, not just GERD, chronic. So, chronic GERD will cause this, that is uh, a squamous epithelium will become columnar epithelium, that is Barrett's esophagus, guys, that can, uh, it is a pre-malignant condition, it can uh, turn into malignancy, that is why it is very important for exam also that you know about Barrett's esophagus. Now that you have come here, let us just review our own uh, Barrett's esophagus PPT, just if you remember... How gas uh, GERD, that is chronic GERD, will become uh, uh, metaplasia, then it will become dysplasia, then it will become carcinoma in situ, and then finally it will become esophageal adenocarcinoma. That is why it is very important to know about Barrett's esophagus, guys. Go and watch the Barrett's esophagus video if you want. Then, chronic bronchitis. So, in chronic bronchitis, you know that there is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium in the uh, uh, bronchi bronchus right it converts into columnar so here what is changing to what pseudo stratified ciliated columnar changes to columnar this is due to what chronic bronchitis and bronchiectiasis okay due to 
chronic bronchitis that's already written here chronic bronchitis and bronchiectasis right okay <clears throat> then coming to cervical erosion guys we are here cervical erosion pay attention here in cervical erosion congenital and adult type there is variable area of endocervical glandular mucosa everted into the vagina so first of all what does the uh, what does the cervix have we already saw that here right we have marked it cervix has columnar so now what is the then how can it become columnar basically it gets everted the glandular mucosa gets everted into the vagina cervical erosion so here if you have the cervix right and here you have the vagina from the cervix it is going to the vagina it becomes everted into the vagina so this is a different type of uh, uh, metaplasia right so glandular mucosa from cervix is everted into vagina okay so that is what you have to understand here the cervix normally has columna here also it will have columna but the columna has also everted to vagina okay so vagina actually has stratified vagina actually has vagina has stratified squamous epithelium and that changes to columna that is uh, because of cervical erosion okay it doesn't change to columnar sorry the one from the cervix everts into the vagina okay so that also they are calling it as a type of metaplasia so we are done with the uh, epithelial metaplasia next we will move on to mesenchymal metaplasia are you ready is it going fine is it going above your head how is it so far did you understand what metaplasia is and uh, you have to understand all the circumstances and locations and all that because it's very important for exam so will you wake up please wake up if you are sleeping wake up thank you for the wake up call see mesenchymal metaplasia there are two types osseous and cartilaginous correct so now in mesenchymal uh, metaplasia what exactly you have to understand see there is transformation of one adult type of mesenchymal tissue into another example osseous metaplasia osseous metaplasia is formation of bone and fibrous tissue cartilage and myxoid tissue so it is formation of bone formation of bone it is so what will happen osseous metaplasia example is monkeybers medial calcific sclero sclerosis you have seen this in the artery in the wall in the medial that is in the tunica media that is the medial calcific sclerosis in old age that is deposit of calcium this is actually dystrophic calcification right isn't it dystrophic yes the calcium metabolism is perfectly fine but because of cell injury or age what is happening the calcium is getting deposited so this is a dystrophic calcification where in the tunica media the uh, calcium gets deposited in the arterial wall so this is kind of an ossification it is form formation of bone you can say right it's not exactly that but you can say there is calcification in the arterial wall so here the form of the cell is not epithelial uh, squamous columnar that it is completely different here okay there is formation of bone and fibrous tissue so this is monkeybergs um, medial sclerosis you can see how the calcium is deposited in the artery wall correct next moving on soft tissues in myositis ossificans so in soft tissues what will happen calcification or osseous formation or bone formation in soft tissues in myositis ossificans what is myositis so basically myositis ossificans myositis is muscle inflammation so in, in this inflammation there can be ossification okay in the muscle then larynx and bronchi also can show um, ossification the larynx and the bronchi in elderly people the cartilage can become bone in elderly what will happen the cartilage will convert to bone okay so that is the mesenchymal metaplasia then coming to chronic inflammation um, in uh, scar of chronic inflammation so in scar basically scars you will see ossification correct fibrosis and all that fibrous 
Then coming to Leo myoma, in Leo myoma, what happens? There's fibrous stroma of the tumor, it will calcify, correct? So in fibrous stroma of tumor, you can see calcification, that is ossification, okay? Then you have another type of mesenchymal metaplasia. So we are done with the osseous metaplasia, mesenchymal. Now we are moving on to the cartilaginous meta, uh, metaplasia. So here it will become cartilaginous, correct? So guys, so how many people are sleeping? We need a wake-up call, right? So uh, what becomes bone we have seen? Can you see now what becomes cartilage? See, whenever there is healing of fracture, right? The cartilaginous metaplasia will occur. Okay, whenever there is undue mobility, that means too much of mobility is there. Undue mobility, there can be cartilaginous metaplasia. Healing of fractures, you will see cartilaginous metaplasia. So that is what we had to cover guys. Uh, we have covered uh, whatever we wanted to cover in metaplasia, the types, everything we have seen. So basically you have uh, seen what are the types, epithelial metaplasia, mesenchymal metaplasia. In epithelial you have seen becomes squamous, that is squamous metaplasia and columnar metaplasia. Let's take a recap of everything. First take a deep breath. <sighs> Excellent. So now let us continue guys. So in uh, first of all, what is metaplasia and all you have understood, right? Metaplasia is nothing but cell adaptation. So in uh, response to abnormal cell, uh, stimuli, the cell will adapt from one type of cell, it will become an other type of cell. It is a reversible change in early forms. Later it can uh, become irreversible and it can also lead to carcinoma. Okay, later means it can become irreversible dysplasia and then it can become carcinoma. Okay especially in Barrett's esophagus. Then we directly moved on to the types of uh, metaplasia guys. There we saw the <clears throat> epithelial metaplasia and the mesenchymal metaplasia. In epithelial metaplasia we saw that whatever is columnar can become squamous. Like example, whatever is columnar can become squamous. Let us see all that here. So in uh, the bronchus, <clears throat> Pseudostratified columnar can become squamous, renal transitional epithelium can become squamous, right guys? Then uh, gallbladder and gallstones and cholecystitis and all columnar can become squamous, prostate columnar can become squamous if you are giving estrogen therapy, cervix, <clears throat> the columnar can become uh, squamous in what condition? The conditions also we should know, right? <clears throat> that we have not written is it so gallbladder due to cholithiasis and cholecystitis cholithiasis cholecystitis prostate due to estrogen therapy <coughs> due to <coughs> sorry estrogen therapy and uh, chronic prostatitis Then in renal pelvis and urinary bladder, again due to renal calculi, they have just mentioned stones, so we also mentioned stones, due to stones, chronic infection, vitamin A deficiency, apart from xerophthalmia, they will cause, it will cause squamous metaplasia. Now in uh, cervix, why does this happen? In uterine endocervix, basically because of prolapse of uterus in old age, okay. So, one thing we have to understand here as the causes of metaplasia, in the, uh, this one, you put the causes, the causes of metaplasia can be infection, can be mechanical, chemical, etc. Any mechanical or chemical stimuli. Okay. Moving on. In vitamin A deficiency, there can be metaplasia of the nose, bronchi, urinary tract, lacrimal and salivary glands. So we are done with the uh, squamous metaplasia. Now let us move on to the columnar metaplasia. In columnar metaplasia, basically <coughs> there can be stomach uh, becoming like intestine, that is intestinal metaplasia due to chronic healing peptic ulcer. Barrett's esophagus uh, due to chronic uh, gastroesophageal reflex disease, the squamous can become columnar 
then uh, this can become a carcinoma of the esophagus. Remember that is called as what? Esophageal adenocarcinoma. That's why they keep doing endoscopy in these people to rule out this uh, carcinoma. Okay. Then chronic bronchitis and bronchiectasis, the pseudostratified ciliated columnar can change into columnar. Then cervical erosion, the vagina has stratified squamous epithelium due to the cervix, uh, uh, the glandular mucosa can evert into the vagina, hence it can look columnar. Okay. Coming to this one, that is the mesenchymal metaplasia, wherein all bone can form, that is calcification usually. You can see in Monkeberg's uh, medial uh, uh, sclerosis, then you can see in uh, uh, muscles, then in larynx and bronchi, uh, it can, in cartilage can convert into bone, right? Cartilage can convert into bone. And in chronic inflammation, the scar tissue, okay, can become bone, that is ossification or uh, calcification. In leomyoma, that is, uh, what is myoma? Myoma again is something to do with the muscle, right? So again, the muscle here can become calcified. The fibrous stroma in the tumor can get calcified, ossified. Cartilaginous, that means they are becoming cartilage, like in healing of fracture, if the person is very mobile, now, the, there can become cartilaginous metaplasia. I am guessing here that the, the bone is becoming cartilage or something. Okay, I am not sure, but that is what it looks like. Um, something has to become a cartilage. Okay, so we are done with metaplasia, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video and hope you have understood and hope you will be able to write a lot in the examination to get marks if they ask metaplasia. Okay. Uh, that's all for from our side. Uh, enjoy, take a break, relax and come back for the next video. Bye-bye.